Hey guys, today we're going to talk about um, types of animal behavior, which is chapter 44, section 2. Again, you can pause this as you take notes if you need to. So we'll come back and we will um, do some examples of this and fill this chart in later, so don't worry about that. The first type of animal behavior is feeding behavior. And it's just kind of like it talks about. It's behavior that they use to feed on, to eat. Well, when animals feed, they need to balance the need to obtain energy with the amount that they spend to get energy. You think about that. If people, if they have to spend so much energy going to get it, is it worth the food that they're going to get? Okay, why does a tiger maybe give up after so long of chasing its prey? Okay, well, what they follow is called the optimality hypothesis. What the optimality hypothesis says is they're going to do what is easiest to get the most food. Well, that makes pretty much sense. We're going to do what's easy, but I want to make sure that I get the most food. So they're going to behave in a way that maximizes their food gathering while minimizing their efforts and exposure to predators. The second type of behavior that we have is competitive behavior. We've talked a lot about competition. So these are examples of competitive behavior. And you remember what competition is. We just finished talking about that. Competition, remember, is fighting. And um, they're going to compete over their resources, whether it's food or space or mates. So some type, there are three main types of competitive behavior. The first type of competitive behavior is aggressive behavior. If you are being aggressive, you might be engaging in physical conflict or threatening behavior between these animals. Okay? When animals are, are aggressive, it rarely results in death. But instead, one of them is going to win and it's going to make the other one give up. So, for example, they might show aggression by roaring. Um, or they might show aggression by just fighting where one of them is going to end up rolling over, showing their belly in retreat to give up. And the other one is going to then win maybe that territory or that mate. Okay, so some different examples of when they might show aggression. The second type of um, competitive behavior is territorial behavior. Well, first of all, we have to know what a territory is. You all guys have heard that word before. A territory is the um, place kind of that the animal lives and claims as their own. Okay? A territory is the area that is going to, that the animal has selected. And it's going to be the group of animals that occupies and defends it for other animals. So they're going to establish this territory and they're going to defend it at all costs. Well, why would they do that? Well, establishing a territory helps to guarantee the survival of the animal's offspring. If your offspring live inside this territory, you want to protect them. You want to make sure that they're not going to be harmed. It also protects the resources that are inside of that territory and those mates. So, so what are some territory behaviors or how do they establish territory? Well, we all know that sometimes they might mark them by um, scratches or by feces. Um, or other things. So those are all different territorial behaviors that we see. The third type of competitive behavior is called a dominance hierarchy. When we talk about hierarchies, those are going to be kind of be levels. How one is higher or in more demand than the other. And those are going to have different dominances. This is going to be a ranking of individuals within a group. From what we call the dominant to the subordinate. Dominant is going to be higher than the subordinate. Well, in a dominance hierarchy, it's going to reduce the need for competition and aggressive behavior because the subordinate is going to learn and know that, hey, they need to submit. They're going to kind of bow down, have you, to the dominant one, and it's going to avoid conflict. So you think about chickens. There's a pecking order. They know which ones um, are going to get to go first, which ones are not. If you've read the book Lone Wolf um, by Jody Picoult, girls, you might have read it. They talk about in there about wolves kind of having this hierarchy. Some wolves that are like the alpha wolf, they're going to get to eat on certain parts of the, the prey where others might just kind of get the scraps. Okay? Some, they have this dominance of who gets to eat first. 
okay? Those are different dominances that are going to be competitive, but it also is going to help to prevent some of that um, conflict also. The third type of behavior that we have is called reproductive behavior. So this is behavior that's going to be used towards reproducing. Okay. These reproductive behaviors may allow these animals to recognize members of the same species or members of the opposite sex. So it's going to help them to kind of prepare for mating, to help them to recognize their species so that they know that they may want to mate with them. And it's going to help to indicate that, you know, this one might be a good mate because they might have good health. They're able to perform these rituals. So the first type of reproductive behavior is called sexual selection. Now this is kind of like natural selection, except this is going to be one where we're going to choose mates based on those certain traits or behaviors that we see. We're going to select the ones that we think are better based on those favorable traits. Those ones that we think are going to be better to pass on. Okay. When we talk about sexual selection, um, there are different courtship behaviors that we see. My grandpa used to call, um, you or you heard in the old days, they used to call courting. You've heard the word courting. Courting is dating. Well, when you're courting somebody, you're trying to attract them. You're trying to see if they, maybe you want to be with them or date them. Well, these courtship behaviors that animals have are different rituals, different series that you see, series of rituals. And these are instinctive, and they're going to show their willingness to mate. So if you see them strutting their stuff, or fighting, or other different behaviors that they, they show, these are all behaviors to kind of attract those mates, to show off, to see that, hey, I'm better than that other one. We'll watch some videos when I get back about some of these. The second type of reproductive behavior has to do with mating systems. What kind of mating system do you choose? The mating system that you choose or these animals choose is going to increase the likelihood that the young will survive. Some um, species are polygamous. They have more than one maybe female per, ma per male. They're going to mate with more than one. Monogamy means that they're going to basically mate for life. There's only gonna, they're only going to choose one. Male polygamy, more than one female. Monogamy, where they just have one. Or there's female polygamy, more than one male. All of these are different types of mating systems. And the strategies that they have are strategies that are determined primarily by the amount and type of parental care required by the young. So depending on how much care it takes, maybe they need more than one male. Maybe they need more than one female. Those are chosen not just to have more than one mate, but because of the parenting that might be involved. A lot of birds are monogamous. They mate for life. The third type of reproductive behavior that we see is called parental behavior. What kind of behavior do the parents show? What, how much time do they invest? Do they abandon their young when, they, when they're born? Parental care increases the chances for their young to survive. So depending on that parental care, they're going to have um, increased chances of survival. But there are costs involved. There's a large energy investment by the parent if they're going to stay with their children. They might have to protect them. They have to search for food. They have to give them shelter. There's lots of costs involved in staying with their children. Mm -hmm. um, this is some nesting behavior that we can talk about later. Some different courtship behaviors that they see. Um, building nests for their, for their lady friend to kind of show off. All right, the next type of animal behavior has to do with communication. Okay, communication is very important in animal behavior, and it's the transfer of a signal or a message from one animal to another that results in some type of response. So we are going to send a signal or a message to an animal in hopes that we get a response from them. There's different types. We can use sight for communication. Okay, one thing that we might look at are bright colors. Those bright colors can serve as a warning. This is called a posomatic color 
moderation. Okay? It might warn others that they're poisonous. We've talked about mimicry before, but mimicry can be used as communication. Sound. We all know what sound is. They can make different noises to communicate. Okay? Chem um, animals can also use different chemicals. Chemicals are helpful because they can convey information farther and longer than a noise or by sight. Pheromones are specific chemicals that are released that cause the same species to react. Um, we put off different pheromones sometimes to attract mates, but ants put off pheromones to leave different signals. They might have one pheromone that's a warning that says, don't go this way. There's something there. There's a hazard. There's a, pr there's a predator. Or another kind of pheromone that leads a trail to a good food source. They have lots of different chemicals that they can leave behind to kind of show the way or give other signals. Touch is a form of communication. So is body language. Honeybees have a dance in their hive where they can show their other animal, the other bees what to do. It's not as bright so they can they kind of sh shake it. It's kind of called a waggle dance. They shake um, their abdomen different ways to show the direction of their food source. And then we have language, the different languages that we can use. The next type of animal behavior is social behavior. If we are social, we need to interact with others. Okay, A social behavior is an interaction between two or more animals, usually of the same species. Social behavior is group behavior. If you are a social animal, then you are going to live in a group. So some examples of social animals, bees, ants, for sure are social. They're gonna live together in groups. Unsocial animals, spiders are pretty unsocial. They live um, by themselves. There are others that we can think of. Social animals might be fish or lions okay, that live together. What are some benefits of living in of social behavior? Well, if you live in a group, you've always heard of like girls going to the bathroom together, but it is, um, it's, it's protection. Okay, you can get protection from prey. You can also have help in hunting for food, things like that. Disadvantages, well, there's a larger number, okay, to um, provide food for. There's also more competition Okay, um, for courtship and things like that. Altruism is a type of behavior that kind of goes along with social behavior. And this is when one member of the social group acts in a way that benefits other members, but it's going to put itself at a disadvantage. You're kind of putting yourself out there. So an example is a worker bee. Okay, worker bees have to do all the work and they can end up sometimes sacrificing themselves. Ground squirrels, sometimes there's one that is going to be able to go out and it's going to search and it's going to send the alarm call back to the others to warn them. That one might get killed. It might sacrifice itself for the others. The last type of behavior that we have is called cyclic behavior. Cyclic behavior is in sync with changes in the environment. It might have to do with temperature changes or food availability or the likelihood of predation. But these are going to be cycles. They're going to have a pattern with the environment. If it's a daily bi biological cycle, it's called a circadian rhythm. So this is something that repeats every day, like nocturnal, think organisms that are nocturnal, or sunflowers, will they follow the sun? It repeats every day. Some of them follow the lunar cycle. It's a behavior that rhythm, behavior rhythms that are based on the tides. Many marine mammals follow lunar cycles. And then we have annual biological cycles like hibernation and migration. They repeat every year. Okay. So we'll talk about these different animal behaviors when we get back and fill out that chart. Uh